In this section, we're going to be looking at elements. Elements are considered pure substances. If you were to break down an element, you would no longer have that substance. You'd be breaking it down into nuclear properties such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. They are considered the building blocks of matter. So everything that we look at, taste, touch, smell, breathe, are made up of elements. The elements all have their own set of properties. So they have different uh, features that cause them to be unique from each other. Some are metals, some are gases, some are hard, some are soft. And so we'll look at those properties as we go along. They're organized on the periodic table by those properties. If an element is close to another, they will have similar properties. They're also symbolized on the periodic table um, to represent their names. And some of these are obvious, looking at the first letter of the element, for example. Um, others may not be so obvious because they come from different languages, such as a Latin name, possibly. When we look at the periodic table, the elements are going to be grouped by their properties. So elements in a similar group are going to have similar properties. If an element is on the complete opposite side of the periodic table, it's more than likely going to have completely different properties. The organization of the periodic table is by groups. So a group is a vertical column and there are 18 groups as we go across. They're numbered by those groups. So group one, two, all the way to group 18. So if they're in the same group, they're going to have similar properties. Horizontal rows are called periods. So when we look at the periodic table, there are seven periods that we will look at. There are two main types of elements. Something is simply either a metal or it's not a metal considered a non-metal. So the metals on this periodic table would be everything represented by red and then everything represented by yellow or blue would be considered a non-metal, either a liquid or a gas. And on the periodic table, you can see what's called a stair-step line. And this is typically the division between metals and non-metals, but you can see there are a couple which are called metalloids, which we'll look at later. So some properties of metals, they're gonna be good conductors of heat or electricity. When we think of wires for conducting either electricity or even wires in maybe our speaker systems, those are gonna be made of metals because they conduct well. They're typically shiny, solid at room temperature, malleable, which malleable means if you were to take a hammer and hit a metal, it's gonna flatten out into thin sheets as opposed to breaking when it were hit. Ductile is similar so we could stretch out a metal into a wire as opposed to it breaking when we were to stretch it. And then high tensile strength is very similar. So again, when we pull a metal, it's not gonna break. When we look at metals, they have lots of different properties. For example, in group one, the first row of metals, those are going to be very soft metals. When we typically think of metals, we think of something hard and strong, but group one metals are very soft and so soft that you can even cut them with a butter knife. Most metals are going to be silvery or gray color. Um, two examples, which are common metals that we think of, are gold and copper that obviously aren't silver or gray. When we look at non-metals, 
their properties are very different. So they're not good conductors. Most are gases at room temperature. So when we think of things like xenon, chlorine, neon, those are gases at room temperature. The few that are solids um, are typically going to be brittle and break very easily. Metalloids have properties that are very much in between metals and nonmetals. So they're all solids at room temperature. They're semiconductors, so they can kind of conduct, but not as well as metals. They're less malleable, but not as brittle as metals or as nonmetals. And those are found along that stair step line that we looked at earlier. And then the last group, our special group, they're in group 18 known as noble gases, um, which they are satisfied elements, which we'll look at later. Very unreactive because they are stable. And these are all gases at room temperature.